Hello everyone and welcome to another very exciting episode here on the MI Gardener channel. I'm so excited for this complete growing guide because it's going to be showing you how, all how to turn your poinsettias into uh, from a seasonal, just a seasonal plant that you have around the house or maybe you get from a loved one into a uh, basically a year-round house plant. Poinsettias are a plant that it makes a beautiful, absolutely stunning plant during the Christmas time and the winter time, but a lot of people throw them out after, uh, well I guess we're pretty late to the game even, but a lot of people still have theirs around still that I know, and they typically throw it around, th throw their plant out after around New Year's, around when they start taking down all the lights and the Christmas trees and stuff as well, but there is a very, very uh, glaring mistake there, and that's that they throw these out as well. <laughs> these plants are beautiful plants, and they will stay alive for you if you take the right steps. So I'm gonna show you how to basically revive this plant. I know um, ours is in a little bit sad shape here. We went to Chicago, but um, that's okay. You need to do a lot of defoliating anyways in order to bring it back to optimum health, which I'll show you. But basically, you can um, you can turn these into a year-round plant very easily. With that out of the way, what we want to do is we want to repot. This plant here uh, is in an eight uh, is in a six point six and a half inch pot, six point five. Um, that is far too small for this size plant. I can guarantee you, it's root bound. That is going to be stressing it out. That's why they typically dry out very fast. Another thing is is that the the plant has been grown in this for quite a while. And you generally want to double the pot size. I'm going to be about tripling the pot size because I want it around for a while. So I have here a, uh, this is a 12 and a half inch pot. So this is a six and a half inch pot. And so we're gonna, we're gonna easily be doing about three times the size there. And uh, well, three times the volume. And so that's the next thing you wanna do. Um, Poinsettias are not particular about the soil type that you give them. You just want to make sure that you give them a very good uh, kind of well-draining loose potting mix like you would with any house plant. Because of the fact that these plants here, they like to grow very fast in a very aggressive root system and they are not something that likes to be cramped in their pot. That's why you typically notice them starting to suffer from leaf drop and things like that around the New Year's. That's why most people don't keep them around very long is because they leave them in the original pot and it's just far too much stress for this plant because they grow very, very, very quickly. So that's what we're gonna do. So again, just make sure you have a, just a, a general all-purpose potting mix with good perlite and um, vermiculite, things like that that add good drainage and aeration because that's important. Now. The next thing that I want to talk about is fertilizing. Before we get into the repotting and the and the defoliating and stuff like that, I want to talk about fertilizing. It is extremely important since you're growing this for solely foliage that you most of the year feed it a nitrogen-based fertilizer, something with um, higher nitrogen than your phosphorus and potassium. So it could be like a 10-5-5. It's really not particular in what it likes. It's just like something that's higher in nitrogen because you're focusing mostly on leaves. However, come around uh, late fall, maybe around like August, September time, you wanna start preparing it to flower and form the red leaves that is obviously, uh, you know, it's it, what makes a poinsettia noticeable as a poinsettia. Um, and so you wanna start feeding it higher in phosphorus around that time. You don't wanna shock it too much because you just wanna grab, you know, work into it gradually. So that's where, you would typically give it something um, that is slightly higher in phosphorus, like a, let's say like a five, seven, five, just for, you know, just for an example's sake, just something that's slightly, slightly higher in phosphorus. And that's going to get you, that's going to get the plant ready to go into flowering because um, that is the next step that I'm going to talk about, which is getting it to flower because poinsettias do not flower willingly as like i said earlier if you're going for a house plant it's going to remain green and it's going to just continue to grow and get larger but it's not really going to flower until you tell it no you are going to flower and that's when it will flower so by having those nutrients in there it's going to prep the plant and it's going to lead into the next step uh well a step later on which is getting it to flower so let's go let's repot this up and uh get on with the growing guide all right, so the first thing we want to do is we want to remove it from its pot liner here. And now once we've removed it from its pot liner, we want to just simply clip this little, uh, there's always a little uh, 
trellis here, you can see this plastic trellis. We're just gonna clip that away. All right, so once you get the little, uh, the little trellis support taken out, you just want to remove it from the pot for now. Uh, and as suspected, check out how root bound that is. Oh my goodness, that is just unfortunate. This plant was being tortured. So now the next thing you wanna do is because since they're generally, um, you know, since they're generally pretty root bound, this is usually something we recommend doing is to kind of tickle the roots and get those roots to be unwound and um, kind of loosened up so that it doesn't continue moving around and around in circles. This applies to any plant, not just a, you know, a pot bound poinsettia. It could be a fruit tree, it could be a, a vegetable plant, any type of um, root bound, you typically want to just tell the roots that it's not any longer root bound because it will, it, it's basically like muscle memory. The roots will continue to coil even though they're in a larger pot. And so, um, yeah, so you definitely want to just uh, give them a little bit of a tickling to work those roots out. And now we're ready to plant it in the pot here. So general rule of thumb is you wanna plant it about one to two inches deeper. It's going to send out some support roots, but not a whole lot. Okay, so now once we have it in the pot here, it's planted about one to two inches deeper. That's going to allow for some support roots to, uh, to form, and it's going to give it extra water absorbing capabilities. Now the next thing we have to do is unfortunate, but it's defoliate, because the plant will simply begin to die after it begins to flower. Um, these, these plants will not uh, flower and then continue to grow. Once they flower, they die. And so we have to tell the plant that it's no longer dying. And to do that, we have to cut one leaf node below the red. It's an extremely important step. So you can see here, we have some red on this leaf, even though it's somewhat green, it's still red. The, the next plant down is totally green. And so yes, you're going to get some milky substance. Try not to get that on your hands. I got a little bit on my hands, but wash that off. It is not good to get on your hands. Um, so I'm gonna wash that off. But yep, so just one leaf node below the red. So just make sure you have one green leaf coming off every single time you prune. See, there's a green leaf right there. And what that's going to do is it's going to stop that shock that the plant is in, which is what causes it to begin flowering is what we'll get into in a bit, which is that shock. And that's that. So, and you can prune off more too. It's just generally you wanna leave some leaves on. So here we go. So this is the state that the plant is in now. As you can see, it's been extremely defoliated. Um, it's going to start leaking that, that white milk all over the place. Just again, don't get that in your hands. Um, it will scab over, it will heal, and then it will begin pushing side shoots. And what you'll notice is that it will push side shoots out and it'll begin to bush again, much larger. It's going to look a whole lot better. And that's really it to caring for the plant. Now what you wanna do is make sure that it gets water on a weekly basis. You probably didn't water your poinsettia that much, much like I don't water mine that much when it's given to us as a gift because we're only expecting it to stay around, uh, you know, kind of through Christmas and the new year. So my battery died, I had to do a quick battery change and we're back. So like I was saying before the battery died is that you wanna make sure you give it water on a weekly basis. Because the plant is growing very fast, it's going to go through that water much quicker than you'd expect. So part of what's going to help you is having a very absorbent potting mix. And that's why I said, you know, a good, a good drainage, good aeration, but also something that has good organic matter in it. Um, the potting mix that I go with is just an organic based potting mix, but it's sterile. So it means it's been baked and that kills off any fungus gnats or things like that that would come in the house. You typically don't want to go with like a compost for that reason, unless you bake it. Now, for those that want to go that route, you can basically take compost, throw it in a baking sheet, bake it at 350 degrees for 10 to 15 minutes. Um, 10 minutes I find does just fine, but sometimes people wanna go that extra five to ensure that there's no other creepy crawlies alive. 
And so yes, you can bake it for 15 minutes. It's not going to hurt. But once you've baked it, it will be sterile and that is fine as well. I just prefer not to put dirt in our oven because we eat from there as well. It's kind of, for me, it's just something I don't do. So I buy it bagged. Um, but there's both options for you. Three to five weeks before Christmas, what you want to do is you want to expose it to darkness. Now darkness is something that is going to tell the plant that it is under stress. Red is a sign that it's not receiving enough light. Typically green leaves, which is why you don't use green light indoors, because green, will, um, green won't do anything. Um, green, because there's green light reflecting back at you, which is why the leaves are the color green. However, when you have a leaf color change, it's showing that there is a difference in light which is why the leaves will begin to turn red because it's looking for a different light source. And so if you leave it in the darkness, you obviously have to bring it out of the darkness, but you wanna leave it in the darkness for most of the day and then bring it out for about two to three hours and then put it back in the darkness. And you wanna give it just enough light so it stays alive, but not so much light that it turns green. So you want that stress. Another thing that you can do is you can get a red light, like a red LED grow light, and you could put a red LED grow light on there. It will continue to keep it alive a little bit better, uh, a little bit better yet than just bringing it out here. Um, and then that, that red light will basically simulate a very low light situation. The very last thing that you can do is get a low Kelvin CFL bulb. Now a low Kelvin CFL bulb is something like, like 3,500. 3,500 is going to be kind of that kind of like, um, uh, I guess it would be considered like warm, uh, like a warm light for indoor use. You don't want something like a bright blue or a bright white or a daylight white. Those are going to have too much blue in them, too much blue, uh, basically uh, light, light waves hitting the leaves and it's going to cause them to turn green. So you, you're going to have a lot of growth still, but you're not gonna get the red color that you're looking for. So um, that is basically how to get it to turn red and the flowering is a process of that, that stress it needs to reproduce. And so it's going to flower as basically as a side effect of being stressed. Um, so once you get it to flower, then again, the process starts all over again. It's really that simple. Once you are basically done using it as a Christmas decoration, um, you want to cut off all that red again, it's going to grow back. And again, just make sure you have, make sure you keep it to the size that uh, you can put it away in a dark location. So that's really it. Hopefully you all enjoyed. Hopefully you learned something new. And if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, post them in the comments box below and I will get to them as soon as possible. And I'll catch you later. Remember to go big or go home. See ya. Bye.